In 1907, Britain and France embraced Russia. They used honey, come, in a triple alliance, Britain, France, and Russia. And the honey that they used to trap Russia was that if we win the war that's coming with the Ottoman Empire, you will get Constantinople, which is what Russia wants. But they promised Russia one thing through the front door, and they took it back through the back door, like what they did to the Arabs. These are people with PhDs in deception. If they tell you that the sun is shining, don't believe them. Go outside and look up in the sky, see whether the sun is shining. When the Russian army had fought in the First World War and had suffered the most losses, eh? the brunt of the kill were Russians, and they were now winning the war, and the Ottoman Empire was collapsing, and the Russian army is only an arm's length away from Constantinople. They don't want Russia to get Constantinople. No. So what did they do? Russian Jews organized and executed the Bolshevik Revolution, which overthrew the Russian monarchy, they killed the Tsar and the whole family, overthrew the government and took Russia out of the war. So the Russian army had to stop in its tracks and could not go to Constantinople. In other words, the Russian Jews stabbed Russia in the back. They did more than that. They brought communism. Communism is not Russian. These dum-dums don't understand that. Communism was created to destroy Russia. Why don't these dum-dums understand it? Communism is not Russian. Communism was created to destroy Russia. To destroy the Russian Orthodox Church. So they brought communism and the Soviet Union. And for the, last, for the next 60, 70 years, this Zionist created entity called the Soviet Union waged war on religion, waged war on the Russian Orthodox Church, killed the priests, closed down the monasteries and churches and so on. 60, 70 years. And then, when the appropriate time came and Israel came into being, it is this same Soviet Union which opened the doors for millions of Russian Jews to now migrate to Israel. If you go to Israel today, you might believe you're in Russia. <laughs> so many people speaking Russian. These are the Russian Jews. And then the Soviet Union, six years after Israel came into being, did something strange and mysterious. Crimea is Russian territory. Crimea is a part of Russia. The Soviet Union decided to give Crimea as a gift to Ukraine. Why? did they do that? The historians don't tell you. So let Imran tell you. They gave Crimea to Ukraine in order to stab Russia in the back one more time. Because if Russia loses Crimea, it will enhance Israel's security. The Russian Navy is based in Crimea and there's a straight line from Crimea to Constantinople to get out of the Black Sea and to get into the Mediterranean Sea 
you got to pass through the Bosphorus. And the city of Constantinople is located right there on the Bosphorus. So they gave Crimea as a gift to Ukraine. They never bothered to consult the people of Crimea and get their consent. No. They never bothered to seek the permission of the Russian people. No. But Washington doesn't want to hear that. The foolish man who now sits in the White House of the United States, the foolish man who would like to pretend that he's a man of wisdom, he doesn't want to hear. <laughs> but what are the rights of the Russian people? Were they not violated? Do they not have the right to correct Iran and recover the territory which was unjustly taken away from them on Israel's behalf? Obama doesn't want to hear that. It's inconvenient for them. But in this masjid, we will, conf we will expose whether it's convenient to you or not. They did more than that. Not only did they give Crimea to Ukraine, but earlier on they gave Eastern Ukraine. Eastern, part of the now Eastern Ukraine was Russian. It was Russian. And the Soviet Union gave it as a gift to Ukraine. Why is it given, being given to Ukraine? Answer is that when the proper moment comes, the same people who brought the Soviet Union into being now have a method by which they can cause it to collapse. The method that they're using now in Venezuela, popular demonstrations, they did it in Egypt, they did it in Tunisia. They are masters of that. They did it with the Soviet Union. I used to think that the Soviet Union collapsed because of Allah, Allah's kindness. But I was wrong. <laughs> no, it was the Zionists who brought down the Soviet Union because they didn't need it anymore. Like tomorrow they wouldn't need you anymore, Saudi Arabia. And they wouldn't need you anymore, Islamabad. When will you understand that? They'll just throw you to the dogs. You served them long enough. So they brought down the Soviet Union. Why? So that Ukraine might emerge as an independent state. That's danger for Russia. They prepared the way. And now Ukraine emerges as an independent state. So the rope is around Russia's neck now. And from that day, when the Soviet Union collapsed, until yesterday, the relationship between Russia and Ukraine was always problematic. But the people of Ukraine still had the good sense and wisdom to appoint a government that was pro-Russian. The Zionists decided it's time for us to use our you know, the street demonstrations. And last October, November, December, the world witnessed Caracas all over again. And eventually, the Zionists got what they wanted. You have the money, and you can send in your special people, snipers who will kill, and so on, and throw petrol bombs, and so on. And eventually they got what they wanted. They created enough havoc. May Allah protect Malaysia from that. Amin. Amin. And the president of Ukraine fled. He's a democratically elected according to your method, Mr. Obama. According to your system. He's a legal, legally elected president of Ukraine. And he had to flee. And these hypocrites in Washington and London and Paris 
who would like us to believe that they are honorable men. They are not. Instead of standing on the side of the legally appointed president and demanding the rule of law, they all showed their colors as hypocrites in immediately recognizing the new government in Ukraine. The new government in Ukraine is anti-Russian. <laughs> That's what they wanted. That's why they brought down the Soviet Union. To bring in a Ukraine into being as an independent state. And then to eventually get an anti-Russian government in Ukraine. If by Allah's kindness Putin had not intervened and been so spectacularly successful this is what the plan would have been the new government in Ukraine would have joined NATO and Russia could not stop it and when the new government in Ukraine joined NATO NATO will then send its armed forces into Ukraine it could include nuclear weapons then Ukraine will pick a fight with Russia and decide that Russia must now vacate Crimea. Shut down your naval base. The rope is now tightened around your neck. Russia has to put its tail between its legs and withdraw its fleet, Black Sea fleet from Crimea. Russia is no longer a naval power. Crick crack, you finish. And Israel will celebrate. That was the master plan. But Allah planned. And Allah's plan was successful. And it is time for the Muslim world to recognize and to see, I cannot influence governments, so what can I do? Don't bother, you waste your time with governments. But the people can understand that this was Allah's plan. They planned, the enemy planned for so long. And at the last moment Allah intervened. And Putin was able to get the people of Crimea to vote in a referendum. And they voted 90 something percent in favor of returning to Russia. They were a part of Russia. And they want to return to Russia. So Putin was successful in delivering to the Zionist movement the first defeat it has ever suffered, significant defeat in the more than 100 years since the Zionist movement was established. If that is not a sign from Allah, it's time for you to wake up. Putin is now succeeding in eastern Ukraine as well. Because they are barking like dogs in Washington and London and Paris. Barking. It is Russia which is doing it. It is Russia which is doing it in eastern Ukraine. Oh? But when the Ukrainian government send the Ukrainian armed forces into eastern Ukraine, they don't want to fight. They say, we will not fight our own people. They refuse to fight. So the only way that the government of Ukraine could now stamp down the insurrection, the popular resistance in eastern Ukraine, is by calling on Washington, come and send your Marines. And then what will Putin do? The, American, the Russian armed forces are amassed on the Ukrainian border. So the Ukrainian soldiers are refusing to fight their own people for two reasons. Number one, why should we do your dirty work for you? We're not going to fight our own people. That's not what soldiers are for. And number two, if we make the mistake of using guns on these Russian-speaking Ukrainians, what will the Russian army do to us tomorrow? And they have already said, Putin has already said, 
we are going to intervene to defend our people. He's already said it plainly. The writing is on the wall. Putin has won a victory in Crimea. Whether governments like it or not, whether governments vote this way or that way, is now irrelevant because all we all know that they have to vote where the butter is. Putin is on his road to a second victory in Ukraine. And they can't take defeat after defeat. So the writing is on the wall. Exactly as Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam has said, that we are now moving towards the Malhara. How long would it take? I don't know. And you don't know. But the Malhama is coming. 